that is Ryder Piping. <laughs> so we'll go ahead and jump into this. We're gonna start off with our plate or charger. And it's actually going to look like this when we finish. So this is just a regular glass plate that you can get from any dollar store. I did not pay more than 99 cents for this. And then we are going to cover the rim of it in rope and Mod Podge. And then we're gonna place a saying right in the middle. So this is the theme that I am using for today, but you can definitely choose your own theme at home. So after we make our plate, we'll make cups that you can customize the bottom of, and then we're gonna wrap them in twine. We're also going to make a coaster, and then we'll also make these really cute wrappings for our utensils and cutlery. And then we also have these really cute candles that we are going to wrap in the rope as well. So we're going to be incorporating a lot of rope here. And then last but not least, if time permits, uh, we'll also make a charcuterie board. It's not made, so I can't show it to you right now, but we're gonna make it together. And let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing you wanna do when you make your plate at home is flip it over. And then we're gonna grab some Mod Podge. For this project, I am using the matte formula. And you can use any sponge brush or paint brush. And you just want to take a light layer and cover just the bottom part of your plate. We're not gonna cover the rim yet. We're just gonna focus on the middle part of our plate first. And you wanna make some nice and neat strokes. Let's make sure you guys can see that, yep. Nice and neat strokes. Do not worry about the white. Of course, this is my podge. It is going to dry clear. But you do want to make sure that you use a light coat. We don't want it to be too thick because the paper that we're actually using is just plain old printer paper. And if we put too much, it might make the ink bleed. But if you do just the right amount, it should be just fine. So we have it covered. When you print out your template or whatever it is that you plan to put in the middle of your plate, it's probably gonna look like this. I've already gone ahead and pre-cut mine to the sides of my plate. If yours doesn't come out perfect, that is totally fine. Mine is not perfect, but once we wrap our rope around the rim of our plate, you probably won't be able to tell. So, you're gonna go ahead and take this and place it right there in the middle. Hold it down. Make sure you press down and get it good and stuck to the glue. Let's flip it over and see what it looks like. Oh, perfect, actually. <laughs> first time I made this at home, it did not come out this perfect the first time. So it should look something like that. And if you do wanna just add an extra layer of protection, you can go ahead and put another layer on the back of the paper. Now I do wanna say this is just a temporary crab. So if you're just having a one-time Friendsgiving party, at the end of the party, you can rip this off and then you can just keep your plate and use it again for something else. So this is just regular printer paper. You will not be able to wash this, um, but you can reuse your plate over and over. You can change your template. So we're just gonna add an extra layer just because. And let it dry. And again, it should look something like this. So I think we're gonna go ahead and just move on to adding the rope around the rim. I don't think we'll bother what's going on in the middle right here. So what you want to do to start to rope your, well, add your rope around your rim is grab some twine or some rope. Mine is pretty thick. The thinner your rope or twine is, the longer it is gonna take you to wrap it around the plate. And I don't want you guys to sit there for two hours doing this. <laughs> so please try to use some thick rope. So the first thing you wanna do is take your Mod Podge again. And this time you can do a thicker layer. It doesn't have to be as light as what we did with the paper. You wanna add a little more because the rope is a little heavier and we want it to stick on there pretty well. So just go around the entire rim of your plate. If it gets on the paper, that's actually perfect because it could use some extra security, why not? So just go all the way around until it is fully covered. 
And again, this will dry clear. When I flip it over and you see the progress, it's gonna look pretty crazy, but I promise you. <laughs> Give it about 20 minutes and it will look perfect. So keep going, keep going. All right. So we are pretty covered here. And we can start with our rope. So, lay your plate down. And then you want to start with one end, and you're just going to place it on there. And you're going to slowly wrap it around the middle of your plate where we have our paper. It might move a little. That's okay. Just try to go back and replace it. So just hold it, fold it around. There we go. Hold it in place for a few seconds and just keep wrapping. And if you use the right thickness of rope, this should probably take you less than five minutes to do. This was pretty quick for me at home. And just keep going. And once it's fully wrapped, we are going to add a final layer onto the back of the rope. And that is what will keep it stuck to the plate. All right. So we are almost there. This is going pretty, pretty quick. This is actually faster than what I actually did at home. So there we go. All right, let's see. Probably gonna need about eight feet of rope for this. All right, there we go. I would encourage you not to cut your rope while you're doing this project, I would probably wait until the end. That way you don't have to add multiple strings. You want it to look nice and neat and not chopped up with different uh, cut strings. So here we go. We are almost there to the finish line. There we go. All right. Maybe about two more wrappings and we should be done. Right now it's Thanksgiving, but I think that this would be a really cute idea for Easter, especially with the rustic string. I can definitely see this being tied into pastel colors. Let's add a little bit more Mod Podge to the rim of our plate. All right. Right around here. And if you can't get all the way to the edge, that's totally fine. On my first plate, I wasn't able to, but once you flip it over, you really won't be able to tell. But you just do want to try to get as close as you can. So we're just going to add a little bit more Mod Podge. And there we go. So I think one more wrap, and we should be good to go. All right. Kind of looks like a bird nest, actually. Perfect. All right. So that is fully wrapped. I'm going to go ahead and cut it. All right. So now is about the time you actually want to cut your rope. But if you cut it into multiple strings at home, that's totally fine. All right. So I'm just going to press it down, make sure everything is good and in place. And then, uh oh. <laughs> I'm going to add a final layer onto the back of the rope. So this can be pretty thick as well. Again, the rope is a little heavy and I do just wanna make sure that this stays stuck on. You don't want your guests to pick up their plate and then all the rope falls off. <laughs> all right, so we're just gonna go around here. And then once you're done covering this, you kind of want to just let it sit maybe for about 20 to 30 minutes. Uh, you can also use a blow dryer if you're kind of not necessarily in a rush, but you want it to, want it to dry a little faster. I'm just going to let mine sit while we move on to the next project. And then when we come back to it later, we'll check on it to see where it's at. So I think a little more and we should be good to go. All right. 
And at home, like I said, I'm doing a rider pie thing, but I really think this will also be cute if you use personalized photos in the middle. And you can print those with printer paper or if you have photo paper at home, you can also use that as well. All right, so I think that is pretty covered. Let's flip it over and see what it looks like. I'm sure it looks crazy. <laughs> That's exactly what I thought. So it has glue everywhere, but in about 20 minutes, maybe even less, this should be totally clear. So we will come back and we will check on this in just a few minutes. So I'm gonna put this off to the side. Of course, we want it to dry upside down. So we will set that over here and come back in just a few minutes and check on it. So next, let's move on to Let's make a wine glass. So this is a pretty simple design. Uh, it is also just Mod Podge. So what you want to do to make this at home is you're gonna also need to print out another piece of paper just like you did for the middle of your plate. So I have that right here. And you're also gonna need Mod Podge again. I'm using matte. If you have gloss at home, that's okay to use, but if you do have the option to use matte, I would encourage you to use the matte formula. So, we are going to cover the bottom of our glass in a thin layer of Mod Podge. Again, I did use printer paper. You can definitely use photo paper if you would like, but this does just cost a little less, and if you just use a little less Mod Podge, you won't make the ink bleed from the paper. So just a really light layer. Get it nice and even. Smooth it out. And then you are going to take the paper that you have printed. You're gonna take it and press it down to the bottom of your glass. I'm gonna flip this over. All right. And you can pre-cut this if you would like, but I found it myself a little easier to just put it on here first. And then I'm going to cut around it. And then just like with our plate, let it dry about 15, maybe 20 minutes, maybe not even that. And when you look back at it, it should be totally clear. So just cut around. It's probably best to mention that the printer paper that I'm using is pretty thick. It's almost like a card stock. So if you are using printer paper, you do want to make sure that it's a pretty good weight. All right. So that is going to dry. And while that's drying, we're going to go ahead and wrap the stem of it in twine. So for this, I am not going to actually use the rope. I'm going to use a thinner twine like this. You can get this from the dollar store as well. And then I'm gonna use Mod Podge again. And I'm gonna cover the stem in another light coat so that the twine will actually stick to the glass. And if you really wanna get creative at home, you can probably even wrap the entire glass, maybe not all the way to the rim, but maybe about two to one inches below the rim if you really, really wanna get creative. At home, I just thought that I really like the look of it to just be around the stem. So that is pretty covered. We're gonna go ahead and start wrapping it. So let's see. We'll start from the top of the stem. So, go around. There is a lot of wrapping involved in this tablescape. <laughs> So just try to hold it in place and go around. And if it moves, just go back, hold it in place. All right, there we go. Wrap, wrap, wrap. Pull it tightly so that it looks nice and neat. And actually, I'm gonna turn this sideways. It might be a little easier. All right. Yeah, that's a lot easier when you kind of hold it sideways. All right, so this is pretty quick too. All righty, and so then when we're done wrapping the stem, I'm gonna add a really cute bow 
just to give it a little pop. All right. So that should be pretty good to go. Cut the rope. And then I'm going to take another layer of Mod Podge, just like what we did with the plate. And I'm going to cover it just so that we add a little extra security. And again, this will dry clear. So let's just hold this down just a little bit, let it get nice and stuck. So you can actually see that the bottom of our cup is pretty much dry already. All right. All righty. And then we'll add a little more to the top part of our rope. All right, it should look something like that. We'll check back on this too once it dries. But I will go ahead and add the bow on right now. I am not the best bow tire, <laughs> but we will see what happens here. So, all right, let's tie a knot. Well, actually, let's start from the glass. Maybe that'll be a little easier. Yeah, that's a lot easier. This part requires no Mod Podge. It just requires skill. <laughs> Bow tying skills. All right. All right. This is good to go. We're going to cut the long part of the strings. And this is our glass, guys. So we will come back and check on this as well once it dries a little more. And two at home, just like I said with the plates, if you don't want to use a rider piping, you can definitely use photos. I think that this will also be really cool if you use someone's photo at the bottom or if you were able to like go in and design a template and put someone's name around the edge of your bottom of the glass. So that is it. And we're gonna move on to the next part. That was pretty quick, right? Um, let's see. Let's move on to the coasters. So I love to make these no matter what time of the year. I think that these are really cute gifts for weddings, anniversaries, birthdays. I actually made these for my dad for Father's Day and I put all of our pictures on them. And it's really easy. So. You're going to start out with the coaster. Again, you can get this from any dollar store. You probably even have some at home. And you're going to need a photo, a four by six photo. I have already gone ahead and cut mine to size. You do want to take your photo and you want to measure it to the size of your coaster. So as you can see, I've already cut mine. And again, we're going to use Mod Podge, but this time, we are going to use the high gloss formula because we do want it to have a little shine. So let's move this over. Let's set our matte formula off to the side. And let's actually switch out our brush. Here we go. So a thin layer. And if you're a crafter, I'm sure you've seen this craft before. But if you haven't, this is something really fun and really quick to make at home. All right. And an idea, <laughs> if you don't want to follow the theme that I am doing today, I think that the coasters are a really cute way to do um, nameplates. So if you choose not to actually put them on the bottom of your wine glasses, I think the coasters uh, would be a good place to put them because your guests can also take them home as kind of like party favors after the Friendsgiving party is over. So we have added a thin layer and then we are going to add our photo on to the coaster. Press it down. Make sure it is nice and secured. And then you're going to take more Mod Podge and you're going to add a thin layer on top of it. And I know I keep saying this, but <laughs> if this is your first time doing something like this or even using Mod Podge, please do not freak out. I promise it will dry clear. It will not look like this in the end. All right. So just make sure it looks nice and neat. 
and it should come out looking something like this. Again, this is not clear just yet. We'll come back and check on it. But once it is totally dry, what you can do just for more protection is to grab some Mod Podge Super High Shine Clear Acrylic Sealant and you'll spray this on there. I'm not gonna spray it right here because I don't want anybody to breathe all of this in, in here. But uh, just make sure you hold it away from you, spray it, and then your coaster should be good to go. So this one is really, really quick and really, really easy. And again, like I said, this is not just a Thanksgiving craft. I love making these at home. Everybody around me has a coaster that was made by me and I'm pretty sure they are sick of receiving coasters. <laughs> so we have that done. Let's go ahead and move on to our centerpiece. So, as you can see them right here, we have our pillar candles, and they are also wrapped in rope. Set this off to the side. I will grab my candle. And we are going to cover this in a layer of matte Mod Podge. So we'll go ahead and move back to our matte formula. So these are just some projects that you can do pretty much anything with, uh, you can pretty much do all of these, well, obviously all of the projects that we're doing with my Podge, but there's just so much that you can do with them, with this. So, when you're making your candle at home, do not go all the way to the top. I would encourage you to only come about halfway up because at some point your candle will begin to drip wax and we don't want it to look ugly. Your candle should melt inward, so uh, don't worry about it being a fire hazard because if you're using a pillar candle, they are made to melt inward. But we don't want that wax to get down here and make our candle look bad. So I'm only gonna do it about halfway up. And a pretty thick layer. Again, the rope is a little heavy and we don't want it to fall off. So that should be good. And again, we are going to wrap. So, switching back to our thicker rope. And we are going to cover it. So let's see. All right. Let's start from, we'll start from the top. The top part of it. And we're just gonna wrap, wrap, wrap. And just like we did with the plate, once this, once this is fully covered, we're gonna go back over it with another thick layer of the Mod Podge just to make sure that it stays on. And this is a pretty quick project as well. So let's see. All right, so that is on there. We're gonna go ahead and cut the rope. Cut it off. All right. And then we're gonna go back over it. You might have to hold it in place for a second just for it to stick. And if you have a lot of strings poking out, you can go back over it with your scissors. I will probably do that really quickly because it looks a little crazy. All right, there we go. Make it look a little more neat. Perfect. We're giving our candle a haircut. <laughs> All right. So it looks like it's staying in place. We're gonna go back over it really quickly. With another layer. All right. All right, and it looks like the plate is coming along. I see it over there getting pretty clear. All right. And just an extra idea at home. I chose not to do it because it didn't really tie in with what the theme that I chose, but if you were to tie leaves inside of the twine, I think that would look really cute. And just kind of have them sticking out at the top just a little bit, not a lot. I think that that would look really nice for a fall tablescape centerpiece. So if anybody is looking to get extra creative, that is an additional idea. I definitely thought of it, but I just chose not to do it. All right. So this is pretty covered. Any excess glue above it, you can just wipe it off. 
All right, so we will let this dry and come back. And again, we'll check on this in just a few minutes. This is how it looks. I'm gonna go ahead and set it off to the side. So, moving on, let's do our wine bottle. This is another idea that I really love to do for birthday parties, uh, especially housewarmings. I love to customize wine bottles for people. And if you don't have a cutting machine at home, which a lot of people don't, this is a way that you can customize it without having something like that. So, all you're gonna do is print off whatever you would like your bottle to say but you do want to make sure that it is at a size that will wrap around your bottle. So maybe about that size. I am going to add a very thin layer of Mod Podge to the back of it. Again, you can use photo paper, but you do not have to. If you are careful and you don't oversaturate your paper, you should be pretty fine. So I'm just going to add a thin layer to the back of it. And then we're going to stick it over our bottle. And then we'll add a thin layer to the top of it. And then we're also going to wrap rope around the top of our bottle. Um, I just kind of wanted to tie it into my theme and keep it consistent with the rope that we've been using. So I'm going to stick this to the front of our bottle. Get it on there. All right. Now, if this is something that you know someone is probably gonna keep as a keepsake, like forever and ever and ever, then I probably would encourage you to maybe spend a little more um, on photo paper. But th if this is something that you know you guys are just gonna throw away at the end of the day, once the party is over, just use printed paper. All right, so it's on there. And you actually don't even need to go over it with a layer of Mod Podge. I might just do it just because, why not? So again, very lightly. We'll go over it, and this will dry clear as well. So just lightly, just to make sure the edges don't pop up at any point in time during the party. My bottle says we ride together, we pie together. <laughs> and I actually saw something really cute in the store yesterday that said pies before guys. I thought that was really, really cute. <laughs> I would have never thought about something like that. All right, so there we go. That is our bottle. I'm gonna go ahead and cover the stem of it or the top of it in more Mod Podge and we are going to wrap it with more rope. I know y'all are like, this is a lot of rope. <laughs> but you don't have to do this at home. You do not have to use rope at all at home. I'm just gonna add it to mine so that everything matches. All right. So. I'm just gonna go down to the bottom of the bottleneck and start wrapping. Alrighty. All right. There we go. All right. And then do stop right before the bottle cap or the cork because you don't wanna have to force your wine bottle opener through that. That would be a little bit of a struggle that I don't want you to go through. All right. Hold your rope in place. We're gonna add a little more Mod Podge to it. I actually gave this exact thing that I'm making right now as a gift to someone over the weekend with a little bit of a different saying, but I did use the rope and she loved it. All right. Hold it down. Add a little bit more. So again, it looks a little crazy but I promise you that this will dry clear. Let's hold that down for a second. And if you get some of the Mod Podge on your bottle, just go back over it lightly and kind of scrub off the excess glue there. Let's hold it down. My rope is being stubborn. Let's add a little more Mod Podge to get it to stay in place. It is okay to use a lot. If we can clean it up, then you won't be able to see it. All right. All right, so just hold it down until it sticks. 
And then just like with the glass, you can add a cute bow to it. Totally optional, not necessary. But it just gives it an extra pop, especially if you're giving it to a girl. She'll appreciate it. All right, so that should be good to go. There we go. This is our wine bottle. It is still coming up, but that is okay. I'm gonna go ahead and tie a bow around it. Hopefully that will keep it in place. Let's see. Alrighty. Tie it tightly and that should keep that bottom one in place. We'll add a little more to the top of our bottle. Let me hold this down so you can see it. Tie our bow. And there we go. So now our, the bottom of our bottleneck is pretty secure. I'll cut this just to make it look a little neater. Alrighty. All right. And then we will just add a little more here. This one is deciding not to stay down. All right. So this project is pretty much done. And then we're going to move on to the last part of our tablescape. The next project is going to be a charcuterie board. So we are going to cover it in tissue paper and then we are going to use Mod Podge and a little bit of water to make it nice and pretty. And you can use it kind of as a grazing tray um, because in my household, we never eat on time on Thanksgiving. We're always hungry and want snacks. <laughs> so we always leave a board out for people to pick off of while everyone is waiting and it sits on the table. All right, so that is pretty much done. So there we go. That is our bottle. We'll check back on this later. All right, so let's move on to our board. This is the last piece of our project. And with this, I just so happen to have a round piece of wood at home. Um, if you do not have a round piece of wood at home, you can definitely use a square piece of wood. And if you don't have a square piece of wood, definitely go to your local hardware store and they should be able to cut your board to size. I never have a problem with asking them for that. Everyone or anyone who's available always helps me. All right. Actually, this is not the last part of our project. I'm also going to show you how you can... Um, create a cute little pocket slash pouch for your cutlery, which is really easy as well. So we'll do that after we do our board. So let me clear my space just a little because this board is a little big. Let's move this out the way. Let's move this here. And then we can get started. All right, that should be good. So. This is my board. So, this is it. We're gonna set it down. And I have my tissue paper here. You may or may not need a drill for this project. For me, I am gonna use a drill because I do wanna add handles to my charcuterie board. You do not have to at home. But if you do, all you need is handles, drawer handles. And I probably got these for no more than $1.50. And at the end, we are going to just add them on each side. I've already gone ahead and pre-drilled my hole so you guys won't see the struggle of that here. <laughs> but at home, it may take you a second to get the measurements pretty accurate. So let's get started. This, we are going to start with, I am using pure orange folk art multi-surface paint. I would say this part is optional, uh, but it's almost not optional as well. <laughs> uh, if you're going to be using wood for this project, you're probably going to be able to see through the wood. So the paint just gives it um, just an extra la layer of finishness. You want it to look nice and neat and cover. You don't want to see bare wood through the tissue paper. So. We're gonna start with painting it with our multi-surface folk art paint. So, might take you a few coats. I'll probably do two. It doesn't have to be perfect because in the end, you're not necessarily gonna see it. 
you're gonna see just enough so that you don't see the wood so let's actually switch to a bigger paintbrush so we can do this a little quicker this one is kind of small all right here is a bigger paintbrush all right there we go all right so start brushing it you can use any type of paintbrush as long as it's a good size <laughs> i'm using a sponge brush and this is actually drying pretty quick all right all the way around all right there we go so on the other side of this board i have actually already covered it in tissue paper it's a big bumblebee so now I'll be able to flip it over and have a double-sided charcuterie board. I just have to switch the handles whenever I want to use the other side. This is also a really cute gift to give someone as well, especially if you personalize it. And it can fit any time of the year. I think we actually might get away with just one layer here. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see, I'm gonna lay my tissue paper on top of it just to see how it looks. If it needs another layer, we'll add one, but I don't think it does. All right. with one layer I think so I think that should be pretty okay because we're gonna do more than one layer of the tissue paper so I think that's good all right so just gonna add a little more paint in the spot that we just took it off of all right so once you have your board fully covered Grab your tissue paper and lay it on top. I'm pretty sure one piece won't fully cover it and that is totally fine. All right, so try to get it as smooth as possible. All right. At home, you probably wanna let your paint dry just a little bit. Just a little bit before putting your tissue paper on. Maybe about five to 10 minutes, or you can use a blow dryer. All right, so that's on there. We'll go ahead and add our other piece. All right. So with this piece, because it is going to cover the other part of the tissue paper, we'll add a little bit of Mod Podge to it. Let's see. We'll use this brush right here. All right. We'll add a little bit of Mod Podge right here just so that it sticks. All right. Set it down. And then this is just our first layer of tissue. We're going to go back over this so that it is a little bit thicker. And then we're gonna cover the edges so that it looks nice and neat. All right, so our first layer is on here. I'm going to cut it last. I could cut it now, but I'm just gonna cut it when we totally finish covering it. So now you wanna take Mod Podge. Matt is totally fine if that is what you have at home. And we're gonna cover this. cover it and then we're going to add the next layer of our tissue paper on it then we're going to use a little bit of water to round out our edges so that they look nice and neat all righty there we go now at home 
if you want to give your charcuterie board a little bit of a rustic look you can tear your tissue paper into pieces that's actually what i did on the other side of this board i'm not going to do that for this project but it kind of makes it look like look like the edges are burned if that's the kind of look you're going for so let's add a little more all over I don't really want this one to look rusted, so I'm not gonna tear it. I want this one to look neat, as neat as possible. This is a DIY handmade project, so they don't always come out looking nice and neat, but usually the crafter is the only one that can tell that something is not neat. Everyone else thinks it's always amazing. So, I think that's pretty covered. Actually, let's add a little more right here. And then we are going to add another layer of our tissue paper on top of it. And let's see here. I actually had a roller. Where did it go? Oh, here it is. Here's the roller. You can use this roller, a Mod Podge roller, to smooth it out. So that there are few bubbles and just go over it as best as you can all right so it's getting pretty flat and then we'll look at it and we'll see if we need another layer but maybe not we will see And then once it's fully covered, we will cut around it, get it cut to the size of the board, and then we'll use a little bit of water and a little more Mod Podge to get the edges all the way down. All right. Let's see where we are. Try to get it as flat as possible. So I actually think we will add another piece of tissue paper here. So it looks a little neater. So let's see. All right. All right. We have one more piece. Let's see. So actually, my paper itself is a little wrinkled. So it's going to probably will look a little wrinkled once I put it on there. But that is okay. So we will add this last layer and then we'll go ahead and cut around the board. So for this last one, I'm gonna add a thin layer of Mod Podge. A very thin layer all the way around the board. This should dry pretty quickly as well. Oh look, our plate is actually 95% of the way there. That looks really good. All right. All right, a little more. Okay, so that is pretty covered. We will add this last layer. We're going to place it down slowly and take it piece by piece, piece at a time, and roll it out smoothly with our roller. All right. And then after we cut around it and get the edges laid, I'll go ahead and screw on our handles. They have some pretty fancy handles at hardware stores. Again, I just chose the ones that cost about a dollar. But if you really want to get creative and fancy, they do have handles that look like diamonds. They have ones that look like birds, all types of things. They even have some that look like pumpkins, actually. I did see those. So if you really want to go all the way in with this theme, I think the pumpkin ones would look really, really cute with this. All right. 
So out of all these projects, this one will probably take the most detail. At home, you do want to take your time and smooth this out as best as you can. So let's see. And of course, you only want to put dry foods on top of this. So no foods with a bunch of oil or anything. Maybe just like some crackers, some slices of cheese. Um, and maybe even put a napkin under the cheese so that the oil from the cheese doesn't get into your tissue paper. So that you can use this again if you need to. If not, you can just rip it off. Probably scrub it off. All right. So we are getting there. Alrighty. All right. All right. Smooth. All right. So I'm going to add a little more Mod Podge right here on the edges of the connecting parts just to get it to lay down a little. All right. There we go. So now I'm going to grab some scissors and I'm going to cut around here and get it cut to the sides of our board. Oh, this <laughs> is very slippery. Your fingers will probably be very covered in my podge after you finish all of this, but it peels off very easily. All right. So let this dry a little bit at home. I'm probably going to hit this with the blow dryer real quick, just so that the tissue paper does not slide while we are cutting. So just a quick second. I actually may add a little more over here to the side because you can kind of see the paint a little bit through here. So we'll add just a little bit more tissue paper right there. So that actually dried it quickly. All right, let's add a little more tissue paper over here to the side. I'll grab my scissors and just cut some of this excess right here. That should be enough. Yeah, we'll add that right there. So at home, like I was telling you on, on the other side, I wanted it to look a little more rustic, so I ripped my tissue paper into small pieces like this. And then I just painted them on with the Mod Podge. So thin layer, lay it down. There we go. It actually blended into the pattern perfectly. All right. So now we are going to cut around the board. All right. So I will start from back here. Right. Doesn't have to be perfect because like I said, actually, yeah, we'll start from right here. Doesn't have to be perfect because we are going to lay our edges down on the side. So just try to get it cut around as best as you can. All right, let's turn it around. Cut, cut, cut. This actually looks like French fry paper. <laughs> All right, let's get this out the way. Put it down. Let's see, where are we? So I'm gonna flip this over so you can see the bumblebee that I actually did on the other side. That is not Friendsgiving related at all. <laughs> but 
that is how the other side that I did earlier this year came out. So, all right. That is pretty good to size. Like I said, it does not have to be perfect. We are going to lay these edges down with some water and maybe a little bit of the Mod Podge and we should be good to go. And then we'll go ahead and attach the handle. So, flip this over, grab a cup of water and then a sponge brush. So I'll grab my sponge brush from over here. We'll actually use this one. Right. Dip it in some water, not a lot, just a little. Tissue paper is very thin. And then you are going to just get the edges wet and then go all the way around the edge. So let's actually lay this down like this. So we'll flip it over. Lay it down like that. So see how that lay down super easy? That's how it should be all the way around your board. Just like that. And then we'll add some Mod Podge to it to make sure that it stays down. And when you're cutting, you do want to add a little, when you're cutting around your board, whether you're using a circle or a square board, probably leave a little bit of the excess tissue paper hanging off so that there is something to wrap around the bottom of it. So let's see, let's do this part. Lay it down, and whatever whatever does not bend over the back of your board, you can just simply lay it down with the Mod Podge. All right, let's see. We'll do this over here. All right, so now I'm going to grab the Mod Podge and secure these edges. So, we'll move our water out the way. Bring back your mat, your matte formula Mod Podge. Right. And we're just going to add a little bit to our brush. And then we are going to go around the edges again. So, here we are. Let's see, I'll start from this end. So this will probably take a little bit more drying time than all of the other projects that we did because we're using glue and water. But you can hit it with your blow dryer if need be. We are always in a time pinch whenever we have events and parties. So I know sometimes we can find ourselves doing some things last minute. So if you find yourself in that predicament, a blow dryer is always your best friend when crafting. All right, there we go. Those are laying down. We'll go around over here. All right. We'll get a little more on our brush, just a little, not a lot. And we will continue to go around our edges. So these are laying down. have anybody watching that's not from Georgia that is not here in the beautiful state of Georgia with us not today <laughs> I don't think anybody has said um, where they're from but let us know where you're watching from yeah, guys we'd love to uh, we'd love to from? see hopefully somewhere that is warm and sunny we got lucky today. There's no rain. It was supposed to rain today. So I'm very happy about that. Bianca, there's lots of comments that I want to share with you. Everybody says that the wine glasses are so cute oh, and they needed you. some new ideas for them. They really love the plates. Um, oh, everybody loves the um, charcuterie board. Oh, great. Lots of great comments here. Thank you. Guys, I am a messy crafter. <laughs> I will put that out there right now. 
please put something down while you are crafting all of this so that you don't have to clean up a bunch later. That is my shortcoming when it comes to crafting. I will sacrifice all of my clothes, all of my furniture <laughs> in the name of crafting. And then later on when I'm finished, I'm like, oh my goodness, what did I do? <laughs> Every time. <laughs> So just make sure you are covering and protecting your surfaces before you start any of these projects. We have uh, Janice who's watching from Louisiana. Okay. Yeah. Hi, Janice. Welcome. My family is actually from Louisiana, a very, very country part of Louisiana that I'm sure no one knows about. <laughs> the streets in that town are actually named after my grandparents. That's how oh, country cool. it is. Yeah. That's very cool. <laughs> Jim Moore Road. I love that. We used to go down there and ride four wheelers in the cornfields. That's the quite summer. country. <laughs> and have crawfish boils. <laughs> that sounds really good. A very fun and country time. All right, so we are almost done here with our board. Like I said, this is probably the messiest craft of them all. So just make sure you cover your area. All right, so I think our edges are all the way down. At home, I probably cut a little too close around the edges, but at home, just make sure you leave a little bit of excess tissue paper. That way they easily go over the edges of your board. All right, so let's flip this over and look and see what it looks like. It probably does not look the best yet because it does have to finish drying. All right, so this is what it looks like. I'll try to smooth it out a little bit more. I'm not gonna set this down because it is drying on the other side, but I'm gonna try to smooth it as much as I can. And then we will go ahead and add our handles. All right. All right, actually, let's hit it with the blow dryer real quick. Let's see. should be pretty dry enough to lay down so that we don't mess up our table all right so like I said I have already gone ahead and pre-drilled my holes into my board at home so it may take you a little bit of time to get those measurements right so let me line up my handles with those actually I'll just go ahead and put the screws through just a little bit let's grab those so we'll add this one, and then we'll add our next one. I actually just made a drink tray out of a picture frame. You guys have to follow me on Instagram if you want to see that. It's actually really, really cool. Um, and I actually would have done that with you guys today, but it does not require Mod Podge. So that is the only reason I didn't do it, but it's really, really cool. All right, so I have added my screws onto the board, and now we will finish drilling the holes. We're drilling them into the hole. All right, so that is one handle on the board. And you can actually paint the handles if you would like to. I'm gonna leave mine the way they are because I actually like them that tan neutral color. Here is our other handle. Let's find our screws. Hopefully they did not fall off of our table. Let's see. Did they? I think they did, guys. I think they fell off the table, but that's okay. We're gonna see if we can find them. <laughs> but, no? It's okay, I can just show them. But once you screw in your handles, it should look something like this. So we'll put our other one right here. 
and it should look something like this. This is still drying, so it might look a little patchy right now, but once it's totally dry, it should look pretty, pretty smooth and pretty neat. So this is your charcuterie board. And again, do not drop your turkey on here. This is not for that. This is just for your dry snacks, like your maybe some slices of salami, some cheese, some crackers. You might even want to put a napkin down, like I said. So this is our charcuterie board. And then we are going to move on to the last thing, which is our utensil wrapper. Just another cute thing to add on your table so that when your guests sit down, they're like, wow, this is really detailed. <laughs> and they're gonna be really impressed when you tell them that it's all just printer paper. They're gonna be like, what? All right, so we're gonna make this little guy right here. Super, super easy. Super, super, super easy. Actually, I dropping everything. So my paper is right here. I'm gonna grab it really quickly, guys. Let's see. Right here. Okay. So what you want to do is print out a pattern. Look at my table, guys. I told you I was really messy. I'm a messy craft lady. Luckily, this is easily washed and all of this will come out. So you're just going to print out a piece of paper um, on a piece of paper, whatever you want your wrapper to look like. I wanted it to match with a theme, with the theme that I'm using today, so I just printed out this plaid orange pattern, and I am just going to fold it, almost like a pamphlet, a tri-fold pamphlet, and you might even need to cut it a little bit. I probably will. We'll see. All right, so you're just kind of going to fold it like that three times. I'm probably going to cut this down just a little bit because I only have a fork and a knife here. But what I think would be really cute and really cool is if you do decide to leave it this size, you can probably fit a napkin in here as well under your fork and your knife and your spoon. But today I just have a fork and a knife with me. So we're going to cut this down to size just a little bit. Just a little. So let's grab our scissors. Probably have to fold it, refold it a little more. But at home, like I said, if you have like a, a dinner napkin, you could probably just leave it that size and slide it right on in there. So let's try that one more time. There we go. And then we'll cut that excess off. So this is just printer paper, and then we're going to use a little bit of Mod Podge just to keep it all together. This is really quick, really, really easy, and then we're going to tie it with a piece of twine just because. Just because it ties in with the rest of our theme. Let's make that a little straighter. There we go. All right. So... Once you have it folded, like that, flip that over, and then I am going to fold the bottom edge of it up. Actually, we'll go ahead and add just a little bit of Mod Podge right here, right now. So where is my brush? We'll grab this. Again, I am using the matte formula. I really only use the high gloss formula on the coaster and that is actually still trying so let's add just a little bit this can really be used for so many things all right just a thin layer not a lot fold it over hold it down for a second and that should stick then we're gonna fold one bottom up just so that our cutlery won't fall through all right so let's see, I have my fork and my knife here. And fun fact, this is actually the silverware for my parents' wedding. <laughs> I still have it. So, all right, let's measure this. Let's see, how far does the fold need to go up? I want my silverware to stick out a little. So we'll probably fold up to about right here. So let's flip this over. 
you fold up. I'm going to stick this right here. There we go. Perfect. All right. And then we'll use a little Mod Podge for right here just to hold that flap down. And when the people sit down at your table, <laughs> you probably shouldn't tell them it's printer paper, but if they ask, <laughs> they will be very impressed because from far away, a lot of this looks like actual fabric and not printer paper. So hold that down and it should turn into a little pocket like this. All right. And then we're just gonna slide our silverware right in there. And then, like I said, just because I wanna be extra cute, I am going to grab some twine and I'm gonna cut a little piece and I'm gonna tie it around and create a bow. All right, and then that will be it. So we have our plate, we have a coaster, we have a wine glass. We also have a centerpiece option or idea. And then you also have something really cute to place your cutlery in. All right. And I'm sure you guys will come up with even more creative ideas at home. This is just an inspiration, but you can go home and I'm sure you'll come up with other ideas that you can use for that Mod Podge. So this is what that will look like when you finish. Super cute. So that is it. We'll check on everything. Might not be done totally drying, but we do have our finished products that I brought in with me to show you guys. So let's move this over. And let's see, let's put our place setting together. All right, so we have our plate. Let's check on it. Let's see. Yeah, that's pretty dry. It just has one spot that hasn't dried up yet, and that's right here. And when you're done with your plate, if you notice you have some Mod Podge on the other side, just wipe it off really quickly. Again, this is a charger plate. Um, I wouldn't necessarily encourage anyone to eat off of this because that would be a big mess to clean afterwards, especially with the rope. But this is just a really nice place setting for you to put your actual dinner plate on top of. So we have that. We have our coaster. So this one is actually still drying, but once it finishes, it should look something like this. And then we have our cup. So this one is pretty much done drying as well. So you have your cup, and again, you have your cutlery. Let's move this one off since that is not done drying. And then we have our bottle, and it does have some Mod Podge all over it, but at home, like I said, just like with the plate, you can go over this and wipe it off. And when it's done drying, everything should be nice and clear. And then we have our candles. So I think this would be really pretty and really dramatic if you did these all the way down your table. It's a lot of wrapping and a lot of glue, but it'd be really cute when you finish. Today I only have two with me, but you guys get the idea. So that is our tablescape. Thank you guys for joining me today. Again, I use matte Mod Podge. I use high gloss Mod Podge. I also use the Mod Podge Super High Shine Acrylic Sealer. I didn't actually spray it here in the studio, but like I said, when your coaster is done drying, you can hit it with a coat of this just for extra protection. Oh, and then our board over here. We do have that. This is not necessarily a part of a tablescape, but it will go on your table <laughs> while your guests are waiting on the actual dinner. So this is that. And yeah, your table should be really cute, guys, and your guests will be really impressed when you tell them that you did everything yourself. So that is our tablescape. Thank you guys for joining me. I am Bianca. If you guys would like to find me on social media, please find me at I am Bianca Octavia, or you can visit my website and blog at BiancaOctavia.com. Bye guys. Happy Thanksgiving and friends.